Hey guys, this is Robonuts1 here, and I'm here to talk about the Marvel slash Sony deal um, that has put Spider-Man back into the sort of hands of um, the Marvel of Marvel Studios again. Um, so this came in very early this week. Um, and the reason why, and I don't usually do um, report stuff unless it's particularly impressed me or or I'm going to talk about it in later videos. Like with the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and future films, I will talk about those, but I will talk about them after Age of Ultron, because a lot of stuff, because at the moment, at this moment in time, we don't know where the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going. Well, well we do, but at this moment in time, I, I would rather wait to see Age of Ultron and then do sp speculation videos on everything else. But this is this um, topic that I'm going to be talking about now is a one of a kind topic. Um, the, the fact that Spider Man is sort of back into the hands of Marvel Studios is amazing. And it's something I want to just touch upon briefly. And um, based on the news that is coming in, um, we know, we actually know very little about, um, what went down in the deal, um, and what the future plans are. The things that we know for definite are that Kevin Feige and this girl called Amy, I think her name's Amy something, are basically collaborating with each other to create future Spider-Man movies. Marvel will basically oversee all spy all of the Spider-Man films, presumably with Spider-Man in them. And there will be and Kevin Feige will not be overseeing movies like Venom, the female um, Spider-Man film, or Sinister Six. And we do know, based on what I've been reading, we do know that the Sinister Six and Spider-Man, um, the Sinister Six, the untitled female superhero, and... Um, Venom are, are going to still come out. It's a very, very weird transitionary thing um, because you're basically using it, it's sort of hard to explain because they're using a, a con they're using the old continuity but have taken me out, like, they're using the Amazing Spider-Man continuity, but they've taken out Garfield. Um, I think Andrew Garfield has officially left the Amazing Spider-Man project. And that is such a shame. Because you've left fans in a, fans with that were fans of that series with only part way through his journey. Um, we haven't seen Spider-Man's big, um, big battle with the Sinister Six and as fans we were promised that. Now unless we're going to have Garfield appear in the Sinister Six and you know, and kill him off, 
which in my opinion should be what happens. The fact that they've taken Garfield out, at th especially at this stage, is kind of unfair to us as fans and to the actor playing, playing the character. Because this is the reason why. Now, we don't know whether that a lot of that has to do with the deal and what went and what went down in the deal. But I think it's just sort of it is throwing the pie into the faces of the fans who have followed this amazing Spider Man journey. Um, and we're not going to get a real conclusion to that franchise. On the flip side is, we are going to be getting a new Spider-Man. Um, and hopefully this is a Spider-Man that Spider-Man fans of the, you know, whether you're fans of the movie, whether you're fans of the comic books, that fans can rally behind um, in this new era for the Spider-Man films. Um, this deal, guys, is huge. Um, because it's the first studio since, um, since Marvel sold off the rights to X-Men, Fantastic Four, and Spider-Man, that we're seeing a true collaboration between two different studios. Um, and that's why this deal is, is so big. Because we've never seen anything quite like that. Um, now, does this mean we are necessarily going to be getting future collaborations with... Um, with the X-Men franchise, and the Fantastic Four franchise. Is that necessarily going to happen? Is 20th Century Fox going to enter... going to have a piece of, um... of Disney's pie? And that's a question I think is going to be very, very interesting. And um, from what I can tell, no, it's that's not going to happen. But as I believe I did predict um, that we would eventually see um, crossover between studios um, when Sony and... 20th Century Fox had that trailer after uh, after Amazing Spider-Man 2 and that trailer was of course the Days of Future Past trailer. Um, all of this guys is just really really interesting. Um, we are getting a Spider-Man um, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in 2017, and it has caused slight issues with the projection that Marvel originally gave us back in, like, October. Um, the original projection was that Black Panther, Captain, Captain Marvel, and Inhumans were all going to come... Well, were all going to come just before, um... Avengers, um, Avengers 3. That doesn't appear to be the case anymore because Marvel has put in, um, this movie in between the, in between those slots. Um, it's a very, very weird, it's a very, very weird move because surely the fact that Spider-Man is based off a... is from another studio, 
Surely that studio can still bring out their movie, but co-align it with what Marvel with what Marvel Studios is doing. I don't understand why we have to interfere with one with one thing to get another thing. Especially when originally when all this amazing Spider Man was gonna come out, it was still going to co align with those films anyway. So why the sudden change? I don't really understand it. But again, a lot of that might be to do with the deal um, that went down. And um, we do know that we are going to get, um, because Andrew Garfield is out, we are going to possibly get um, a new Spider-Man character. And a lot of fans speculate that this might be um, Miles Morales. Now that would be very, very interesting, especially if um, if, if the Spider-Man character co-aligns with what will what we will be seeing in Civil War. Um, I do feel a bit sorry for Captain America though. Um, Captain America has just exploded with, um, with this stuff. Um, because Captain America has landed with the weight of Spider-Man into its ranks. It's very, very peculiar. Um, Here's what I'm speculating, um, and I could be completely wrong, but here's what I'm kind of speculating. If Sinister Six goes ahead, I think, I think Andrew Garfield should return as Spider-Man and end his story arc. But what I think they should do is I think they should kill Andrew Garfield off. In Sinister Six. Um, and that basically. Um, Andrew. Um, basically Spider-Man either fails. To um, defeat. Um, to defeat the Sinister Six. Or. He succeeds in defeating the Sinister Six but dies in the process, following the ultimate universe that they've been following. Um, because then we, because then we could introduce the, um, the Miles Morales character in Spider-Man. Um, that's what I would preferably want to see. Um, I think it's preferably what should happen. And I think it would really, really redeem. Um, I think it would allow for some kind of closure for the Amazing Spider-Man franchise to, to continue. Um, because I'm a fan of the Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider-Man story. Um, I think it was a wonderful story, and I think the fact that you are not casting older is weird, and the fact that you are casting younger doesn't make sense. Like, y you cannot have your cake and eat it too. You, unless you're doing either a full reboot, or a soft reboot, where you kill off your major character. Because casting younger isn't where, isn't what we saw with the character originally. 
And I think that's something that Sony and Marvel have to keep in mind. Now, it's also particularly interesting for Marvel, because Marvel might fall into a very interesting trap if they're not careful. And it's a trap that I don't want to particularly see them fall into, but it's a very easy trap for them to fall into. And that is... In Captain America, you are having a lot of major characters show up for that movie. Don't over... Like, don't over hinder your characters. Because as soon as you overdo certain elements, like, as soon as you have too many characters in one film, you do unfortunately fall into the trap of... You know, you do fall into the trap of... Um, of this character, of the actual Captain America character being overshadowed in his own movie. And Winter Soldier was an amazing movie. And I think if Marvel wants to recapture that, don't add so many important characters. Get rid of Hawkeye, get rid of Black Widow, and just have Iron Man... I... Well, actually, no, to be fair, you could still have Black Widow in. But basically, you have... Like, don't have Black Panther in Civil War if you didn't originally want him. And and uh, and I feel like the Spider-Man deal came out, came too late. Because Marvel already laid out the plans for their future movies, which they're now trying to scramble trying to rearrange so that they can fit in one movie. Um, it's a very, very dangerous step, um, and I don't want it to all crumble down because of, because of one character. Um, so that's what I think of, um, this. Um, I'm very excited, very nervous, about it. Um, I think it will open a lot of interesting doors um, between studios and I think it will open a lot of doors for Marvel Studios because Spider-Man is Marvel's staple character. Um, he is pretty much the face of Marvel. Um, so is it it's very, very interesting. Um, so I'm Rob and that's one here. Um, let me know what you guys think about this deal. Um, do you like it? Do you hate it? Um, what do you think of Andrew Garfield being out as Spider-Man? Um, let me know in the comments below. Uh, and I shall see you all and I shall see you all next week for um, videos. I'm gonna try and get that um, that um, I I'm gonna try and get comic book reviews back um, back um, running again. Um, so I think that's what's gonna happen. Uh, so, yeah. See you guys later. Bye.